I sing the body electric. I sing the body electric. The armies of those I love engirth me, and I engirth them. They will not let me off till I go with them, respond to them, and discorrupt them, and charge them full with the charge of the soul. Was it doubted that those who corrupt their own bodies conceal themselves? And if those who defile the living are as bad as they who defile the dead, and if the body does not do fully as much as the soul, and if the body were not the soul, what is the soul? The love of the body of man or woman balks account. The body itself balks account. That of the male is perfect, and that of the female is perfect. The expression of the face balks account, but the expression of a well-made man appears not only in his face, it is in his limbs and joints also. It is curiously in the joints of his hips and wrists. It is in his walk, the carriage of his neck, the flex of his waist and knees. Dress does not hide him. The strong, sweet quality he has strikes through the cotton and broadcloth. To see him pass conveys as much as the best poem, perhaps more. You linger to see his back and the back of his neck and shoulder side. The sprawl and fullness of babes, the bosoms and heads of women, the folds of their dress, their styles as we pass in the street, the contour of their shape downwards, the swimmer naked in the swimming bath, seen as he swims through the transparent green shine, or lies with his face up and rolls silently to and fro in the heave of the water. The bending forward and backward of rowers and rowboats, the horseman in his saddle, girls, mothers, housekeepers in all their performances, the group of laborers seated at noontime with their open dinner kettles and their wives waiting, the female soothing a child, the farmer's daughter in the garden or cow yard, the young fellow hoeing corn, the sleigh driver driving his six horses through the crowd, the wrestle of wrestlers, two apprentice boys, quite grown, lusty, good-natured native boys, out on the vacant lot at sundown after work, the coats and caps thrown down, the embrace of love and resistance, the upper hold and under hold, the hair rumpled over and blinding the eyes, the march of firemen in their own costumes, the play of masculine muscle through clean setting trousers and waist straps, the slow return from the fire, the pause when the bell strikes suddenly again, and the listening on the alert, the natural perfect varied attitudes, the bent head, the curved neck, and the counting, such like I love, I loosen myself, pass freely, am at the mother's breast with the little child, swim with the swimmers, wrestle with wrestlers, march in line with the firemen, and pause, listen, count, I knew a man, a common farmer, the father of five sons, and in them the father of sons, and in them the fathers of sons. This man was of wonderful vigor, calmness, beauty of person, the shape of his head, the pale yellow and white of his hair and beard, the immeasurable meaning of his black eyes, the richness and breadth of his manners. There I used to go and visit him to see he was wise also. He was six feet tall. He was over eighty years old. His sons were massive, clean, bearded, tan-faced, handsome. They and his daughters loved him. All who saw him loved him. They did not love him by allowance. They loved him with personal love. He drank water only. The blood showed like scarlet through the clear brown skin of his face. He was a frequent gunner and fisher. He sailed his boat himself. He had a fine one presented to him by a ship joiner. He had fouling pieces presented to him by men that loved him. When he went with his five sons and many grandsons to hunt or fish, you would pick him out as the most beautiful and vigorous of the gang. You would wish long and long to be with him. You would wish to sit by him in the boat that you and he might touch each other. I perceived that to be with those I like is enough. To stop in company with the rest at evening is enough. To be surrounded by beautiful, curious breathing, laughing flesh is enough. To pass among them, or touch any one, or rest my arm ever so lightly round his or her neck for a moment, when is that then? I do not ask any more delight, I swim in it as I see. There is something in staying close to men and women, and looking on them, and in the contact and odor of them, that pleases the soul well. All things please the soul, but these please the soul well. 
This is the female form. A divine nimbus exhales from it from head to foot. It attracts with fierce, undeniable attraction. I'm drawn by its breath as if I were no more than a helpless vapor. All falls aside but myself and it. Books, art, religion, time, the visible and solid earth, and what was expected of heaven or feared of hell are now consumed. Mad filaments, ungovernable, shoots plays out of it. The response, likewise ungovernable, hair, bosoms, hips, bends of legs, negligent falling hands, all diffused, mine, too diffused, ebb stung by the flow, and flow stung by the ebb, love flesh swelling and deliciously aching, limitless limpid jets of love, hot, enormous quivering jelly of love, white blow and delirious juice, bridegroom, night of love working surely and softly into the prostrate dawn, undulating into the willing and yielding day, lost in the cleave of the clasping and sweet flesh day, this is the nucleus, after the child is born of woman, man is born of woman, this the bath of birds, this the merge of small and large, and the outlet again. Be not ashamed, woman. Your privilege encloses the rest and is the exit of the rest. You are the gates of the body and you are the gates of the soul. The female contains all qualities and tempers them. She is in her place and moves with perfect balance. She is all things duly veiled. She is both passive and active. She is to conceive daughters as well as sons, and sons as well as daughters. As I see my soul reflected in nature, I see through a mist, one with inexpressible completeness, sanity, beauty. See the bent head and arms folded over the breast, the female, I see. The male is not less the soul nor more, he too is in his place, he too is all qualities, he is action and power. The flush of the known universe is in him, scorn becomes him well, and the appetite and defiance becomes him well. The wild is largest passions, bliss that is utmost, sorrow that is utmost, becomes him well, pride is for him. The full spread pride of man is calming and excellent to the soul, knowledge becomes him. He likes it always, he brings everything to the test of himself. Whatever the survey, whatever the sea, and the sail, he strikes soundings at last only here. Where else does he strike soundings except here? The man's body is sacred, and the woman's body is sacred. No matter who it is, it is sacred. It is the meanest one. It is the laborer's gang. It is one of the dull-faced immigrants just landed on the wharf. Each belongs here or anywhere just as much as the well-off, just as much as you. Each has his or her place in the procession. All is a procession. The universe is a procession with measured and perfect motion. Do you know so much yourself that you call the meanest ignorant? Do you suppose you have a right to a good sight and he or she has no right to a sight? Do you think matter has cohered together from its diffuse float and the soil is on the surface and water runs and vegetation sprouts for you only and not for him and her? A man's body at auction. For before the war, I often go to the slave mart and watch the sale. I help the auctioneer. The sloven does not half know its business. Gentlemen, look on this wonder. Whatever the bids of the bidders, they cannot be high enough for it. For it is the globe lay preparing quintillions of years without one animal or plant. For it is the revolving cycles truly and steadily rolled. In this head, the all-baffling brain, in it and below the making of heroes. Examine these limbs, red, black, or white they are, cunning and tendon and nerve. They shall be stripped that you may see them. Exquisite senses, life-lit eyes, pluck volition. Flakes of breast muscle, pliant black bone and neck, flesh not flabby, good side arms and legs, and wonders within there yet. Within there runs blood, the same old blood, the same red running blood. There swells and jets a heart. There all passions, desires, reaching aspirations. Do you think they are not there because they are not expressed in parlors and lecture rooms? This is not only one man. This is the father of those who shall be fathers in their turns. In him the start of populous states and rich republics, of him countless immortal lives with countless embodiments and enjoyments. How do you know who shall come from the offspring of his offspring through the centuries? Who might you find you have come from yourself if you could trace back through the centuries? A woman's body at auction. 
She too is not only herself, she is the teeming mother of mothers. She is the bearer of them that shall grow and be mates to the mothers. Have you ever loved the body of a woman? Have you ever loved the body of a man? Do you not see that these are exactly the same to all in all nations and times all over the earth? If anything is sacred, the human body is sacred, and the glory and sweet of a man is the token of manhood untainted. And in man or woman, a clean, strong, firm, fibered body is more beautiful than the most beautiful face. Have you seen the fool that corrupted his own live body, or the fool that corrupted her own live body? For they do not conceal themselves, and cannot conceal themselves. O oh, my body, I dare not desert the likes of you in other men and women, nor the likes the parts of you, I like, I believe the likes of you are to stand or fall with the likes of the soul, and that they are the soul. I believe the likes of you shall stand or fall with my poems, and that they are my poems. Man's, women's, child's, youth's, wife's, husband's, mother's, father's, young man's, young woman's poems. Head, neck, hair, ears, drop, and tympan of the ears. Eyes, eye fringes, irises of the eye, eyebrows, and the waking or sleeping of the lids. Mouth, tongue, lips, teeth, root of the mouth, jaws, and the jaw hinges. Nose, nostrils of the nose, and the partition. Cheeks, temples, forehead, chin, throat, back of the neck, neck slew. Strong shoulders, mainly beard, scapula, hind shoulders, and the ample side, round of the chest. Upper arm, armpit, elbow socket, lower arm, arm sinews, arm bones, wrist and wrist joints, hand, palm, knuckles, thumb, forefinger, finger joints, fingernails, broad breast, front, curling hair of the breast, breastbone, breast side, ribs, belly, backbone, joints of the backbone, hips, hip socket, hip strength, inward and outward round, man balls, man root. Strong set of thighs, well carrying the trunk above. Leg fibers, knee, knee pain, upper leg, under leg, ankles, instep, footballs, toes, toy, toe joints, the heel, all attitudes, all the shapeliness, all the belongings of my or your body or any one's body, male or female. The lung sponges, the stomach sac, the bowel sweet and clean. The brain in its folds inside the skull frame, sympathies, heart valves, palate valves, sexuality, maternity, womanhood, and all that is a woman, and the man that comes from woman, the womb, the teats, nipples, breast milk, tears, laughter, weeping, love looks, love perturbations, and risings, the voice, articulation, language, whispering, shouting it loud, food, drink, pulse, digestion, sweat, sleep, walking, swimming, poise on the hips, leaping, reclining, embracing, arm curve and tightening the continual changes of the flex of the mouth and around the eyes the skin the sunburnt shade freckles hair the curious sympathy one feels when feeling with the hand the naked beat of the body the circling rivers the breath and breathing in in and out the beauty of the waist and thence of the hips and thence downward towards the knees the thin red jellies within you or within me the bones and the marrow in the bones the exquisite realization of health oh i say these are not the parts and poems of the body only but of the soul oh i say now these are the soul